All right, so I have seem to have a little bit of interest in this guy right here. So this is my door closure that I use for my door. Overall, it is fairly simple. Um, for this, I will go ahead and provide links down below. Um, also, in my GitHub, I will add the STL files for the arm, the case, and then I will provide links for everything as well. Um, so overall, fairly simple. Um, in this case, I just have a geared motor. This is a 12 volt motor. Um, and so if you look at the link, I will put the gear ratio in there. Um, you can get ones that are a little faster, you can get ones that are a little slower. I personally think it's a perfect speed. I would not suggest going any faster. Um, I have a Wemos D1 Mini, and then I also have a motor driver. So, um, and then there is a See, I can't really pull it out, but there's a magnet. Yep, it's on there. I have a magnet embedded in the top of this arm right here. And then right here, it's hard to see. Right here is a Hall effect sensor. And then right here is a Hall effect sensor as well. And that controls the end stop for the arm when it opens and closes. That's what tells the Wemos D1 Mini where the end stops are. So give me a few minutes and we'll switch over. Well, I guess for you, it'd be a second. We'll switch over to a wiring diagram and then I'll also run through the code real quick. Um, you can copy and paste the code into ESP Home and make your, your own device. Um, all in all, I think about four bucks, about 13 bucks, probably somewhere around 20 to $25. And then for the plastic, you know, really, really cheap if you have your own 3D printer. Um, fairly, fairly simple project. Absolutely love it. Once again, um, this requires 12 volts. Um, two amps should be more than sufficient for this motor. All right, let's take a look at the code here. Um, starting off, just like every other project we do, we're going to have the ESP home name. We're going to have the chip that we're using. Um, in this case, I'm going to keep the logger uh, enabled. Um, Overall, there's not much going on uh, on this device anyway. Um, and this way I can just, I can see when the end stops work and if there's any issue, you can help troubleshoot it. Um, for this tutorial, I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six for the API password. Um, obviously we're gonna keep uh, over there updates installed. Uh, this is our Wi-Fi information. We're gonna step, skip cover for the moment. Um, we're gonna go to the binary sensor. So this is what is tied to the Hall Effects uh, sensor. So this is a sensor that when it's all the way open, uh, when the when the motor is all the way open, which means it's, it's in the process of closing the door, uh, this one's gonna be tripped. When this one's also tripped, it is gonna open the cover. Um, so when it opens all the way up and closes the door, I want the motor to go back to its naturally closed state. That way there's no issues. You can come right back in and open the door. Uh, for some reason, if you want it to stay, you know, the motor to stay all the way open, which with the door in the closed state, you can just go ahead and remove this area right here. So going to this lower one, uh, this is the whole effect sensor for when uh, the motor itself is all the way, well, I'll say, you know, all the way closed or opened in this case, um, when it's in its resting state. Going down to the switch. Um, these are the two switches that we are tying to D pin D3 and D4. These are going to our motor driver. Um, this is what's going to drive our motor forward and drive our motor backwards. Um, it's not that often I actually use an interlock feature. In this case, though, we are using the interlock feature. Um, and, what that, and what you do here is just take and use the ID of the opposite switch. And what this does is internally in the software, well, in the firmware itself on the chip, it interlocks these, which means that both of these switches cannot be engaged at the same time. So if, if what you turn one on, it will inherently force the other one off and then interlock wait time. That's the time before it will automatically uh, turn on the other switch. So if if one of them is on, say this one's on and I click on this one, it will turn this one off and then 500 milliseconds later, it will turn this one on. 
All right, now we're going to come up to the cover. Uh, so inside ESP Home, this is an end stop cover example. Um, you can go ahead and change the name here to you know, match whatever you're looking for it to match. Um, so what, what this is simply doing right here is for the open action, so when we hit open on the cover, we want to turn on the door close switch. Um, in this case, I have a six second duration. When it gets to the end stop, door closed, it's going to stop. So this is where you know we, we enter what type of end stop that we're using, or the ID of the end stop that we're using. For the close action, so when we hit close, it's going to turn on the door open switch, which you know engages the motor to go the other direction. And then this is the end stop for the other direction. Now it's important to note here for the six seconds, um, and if you're using the same setup, it should be, you know, it should be fairly similar, but this is where the logs come, come into play. So as far as the stopping here, it's stopping based on the end stops, where the open duration and the closed duration comes from is on the slider itself. You know, the slider of the progress itself, um, it's gonna, that's based on the time because there's no uh, you know, potentiometer or anything in place that actually is going to you know, say, hey, the, you know, the cover is currently 30% of the way open. It's uh, based on time at that point. So you wanna look at how long it takes for it to fully open, fully close, and enter that duration into here. For the stop action, it's gonna, you know, we have a set just to turn off everything. And then I currently have a max duration of seven seconds, which means for some reason, if one of the end stops fail, you know, in this case, the hollow effect sensor fails, the max duration of the, of the open or the close duration is seven seconds. So it'll automatically shut itself off at that point so we don't destroy the motor um, or you know, create a fire hazard. So overall, I mean, this is fairly simple. I will copy and paste this code um, into the Git, my GitHub page. Um, all right. Here in a second, I'm going to switch over to the wiring diagram. All right. As far as the wiring, overall, it's fairly simple. You're going to bring 12 volts into this board. This is the motor driver. Um, now, this driver is capable of driving two motors. We're only using uh, half of it. So you're going to bring 12 volts into this driver. It's imperative. You pay attention to the positive and negative input. Um, for the motor itself, you're going to wire the motor into motor slot one. Um, it is, in this case, backwards from this one. So ground here, positive here. Now, because this is a motor driver and you can reverse the polarity, if you reverse uh, you know, the motor, or sorry, if you connect the motor up to it backwards, it's not going to hurt anything. The motor is going to go in the opposite direction. Um, so when you build this, if you follow this, it should go the same way. For some reason, if you need to change uh, the direction of the motor, Easiest thing to do is just uh, swap these around. All right, um, these right here are the, the Hull Effects sensors. Um, the way I designed this case is there's actually a channel here that goes all the way up into the top compartment. So you're just gonna take the, the leads here, um, solder some wires onto it first, and then bend this at a 90 degree. And you're gonna basically take these pins slide it into this channel and the hollow effect sensor should sit flat once there is a 90 degree bend. This one right here, you're gonna do something, uh, you know, very similar to it. Um, you can cut, you know, depending on the hollow effect sensor you have, you can cut these a little bit shorter. You may or may not, um, well, I guess where the bend's gonna be kind of depends on your setup. Um, for me, I end up having a hollow effect sensor, the body of itself sit about somewhere right here in the middle. Um, I left this as a channel so you can go ahead and adjust this. So, all right. So that's that part. So, um, benefit to this chip is it has an onboard regulator. It's actually gonna output 3.3 volts. So we don't need a separate power uh, source for the Hall effects and for the Windows D1 Mini. So we're gonna come out on the ground and we're gonna share the ground common with the two Hall effect sensors and with the Wemos D1 Mini itself. Uh, it's gonna be the same thing for the 3.3 volts. We're gonna come out and we're gonna provide, I know this says five volts, they are five volt um, Hall effect sensors. I've been running it now for several months on 3.3 volts and it works just fine. 
So you're going to bring the 3.3 volts out and you're going to hit these two legs and you come over to the 3 volt pin on the Wemos D1 Mini. Um, coming off the motor driver to the Wemos D1 Mini, we're going to come off um, on D0 and we're going to go to pin D3. We're going to come off uh, D1 and we're going to go to pin D4. So this is how the motor, or how the Wemos D1 Mini will essentially control the motor driver. Basically, it outputs power on, say, D4, and the motor will turn forward. Then it outputs, it shuts that one off, and outputs power on D3, and it'll uh, swap the polarity and turn the motor backwards. Um, coming off the hall effect sensor, um, the one over in this area right here for the, when the, when the motor's all the way open, which it means it's closing the door, um, that is going to go to pin D, D6. Um, this is all effect sensor for the resting state, and that is going to be D5. Now, the way these all effect sensors operate, when you put a magnet next to it, um, it's got five, you know, it's connected to, to ground and five volts. When you put a hall effect sensor next to it, it is, it's basically a switch, and it'll connect the output and ground together. So when it comes to, when it comes in contact with a magnet or proximity near a magnet, it will basically ground this pin out to zero, which is exactly what we want for our binary sensor. So hopefully this helps. If you have any questions, you know, leave them below. Um, hopefully this is more than clear. Thank you for watching.